Hi, my name is Skinny from the Nine. I'm a rapper. I was born in Hialeah, Florida, and I was raised in New Jersey. So I was born in Florida, and uh, it was me, my mom, and my dad. And uh, my dad ended up going to jail. He did like a three-year bid. So when my dad was in jail, it was just me, my mom, and uh, my brother, Josh, who was, just, who was probably just a baby. And um, when my dad was in jail, my mom found a new guy who ended up being my stepdad. And they had a lot of other kids. So when you, uh, when you put all of us together, it was seven of us. Basically, my mom and my stepdad, they were doing a lot of illegal stuff. They were like credit card scamming, uh, identity fraud, like going to places, stealing people's money, like maxing out credit cards. And like, I was always on the move. They, they were on the run this whole time. So uh, I lived like everywhere. I lived in uh, New Jersey, Florida, Mississippi, North Carolina, South Carolina, Connecticut, Nevada, Orlando. Like I lived all over New Jersey. I lived in Philly, New York. Staten Island, Long Island, like I lived everywhere. But I never had stability. So like that kind of sucked because like deep down as a kid, like I always wanted to belong to something. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to join like the football team. I wanted to be part of the basketball team. I wanted to like have friends and like do the sleepovers. Like mom, I'm going to like Jim's house down the street. You know what I'm saying? Never had, I could never experience any of that. But then my stepdad ended up doing like a, like a job, like going to go do something, like when, what they were doing, like the scamming and all that and he ended up getting caught, and we were living in Nevada. And uh, when that happened, my mom, she just like, my mom was never a good mom, by the way. Like, I was always, ra I was raised with my dad and my stepdad. My mom did none of the raising. I don't know where she was. She was just never in the picture. So when, uh, when my stepdad went to jail, it was, just, it, was just, she, it was just a single mom with seven kids, and like, she just lost her mind, because she was not ready to be a mom or take on that much responsibility. So she sold everything and uh, we lost our house. Like she spent all our money. And like, I just remember like being like in a minivan, just like driving from like state to state, just like living like, like shit. Like, my, uh, like I remember not having any sneakers. Like my hair was down here, never had a haircut. There were times we didn't eat. I was living in shelters, like living in like little ass hotels. My mom would leave us with strangers because she was trying to go get some money. And like everywhere we went, it was just bad. Like my whole life was like that probably for like two years. Like, but yeah, they also got splitting up. Like my mom had lost us. So then we were like in uh, custody of like the state. So I was in Dyfus. I was living in like orphanages and all that other stuff. My mom eventually got us back. She was just, she was just bad. Like I was really like down bad. Like I was really homeless. And like it all kind of changed when like I turned like 12 years old. Because then um, my mom finally realized, because I missed a whole year of school. Like, I didn't even go to sixth grade. Like, I went from fifth grade, missed sixth grade, and then went to seventh grade. I don't even know how my mom did it. My mom was, like, such a scammer. She would, like, like uh, forge, like, school documents. Like, she would forge report cards. Like, because, like, it, it was just crazy. She, she's a schemer. So, um, so, yeah, I ended up moving with my dad, and that was, he ended up living in Somerville, New Jersey. So that's where I finally, like, established some stability. So I did all my schooling there, like I, all the way, like I graduated high school in Somerville, like that's where I lived. So that's why, like I say, I'm from Jersey because that's where I was raised. That's why I finally experienced like belonging somewhere and like stability, you know what I'm saying? I was, uh, I was like very like upset. I was very like troubled. Like I was mad at the world, but like I always kept on the back of my mind. Like I know I'm destined for something greater. The first song, probably like one of the first songs I ever heard was like Eminem cleaning on my closet. And like that right there like stood out to me so much. That's what like made me fall in love with like hip hop. I thought I was the only one like going through that type of stuff. But then I heard that song and I'm like, oh, this guy is like, he had like the same childhood as me. And like, look at him. He's like a huge rapper. I was like, that could be me one day. So I started writing. I was always writing music, but like I never recorded it. I didn't finally start recording until I moved to my dad because he got me a microphone. Kind of like just like practicing, 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 practicing. And then when I, finally graduated, when I finally graduated high school, I was like, all right, like, it's time to like kick up. Like, it's time to like make this like happen. So I, I like, I always had a job. Like, I never was lazy. Like, I always got a job. I worked everywhere. And um, I just always saved up my money. I was paying for my own studio sessions. I was paying for like my own marketing. I was buying my own beats. Like, I was, I was not playing any games. I lived in Patterson. Like, I had lived in Patterson before, like before moving with my dad. Like, that was one of the places I lived in. So like, 
I had like a connect like when I just saw Fetty Wap get famous, I was like, wow, like this shit is really like possible. I used to write all my music, but like I said, when like me and my girlfriend broke up, I kinda like went through a transformation. You know what I'm saying? Like my whole life like came crashing down. I was kinda like a little bit sad, a little bit upset. And like, so I went, I'd uh when I went to the studio to record Love Blast, I didn't write anything. I went in the booth and just like freestyled the whole thing. That was the only thing different that I'd done in the past. And when I did that, I dropped it, everybody connected with it. So ever since then, I just been like freestyling all my songs. It was when I dropped Love Blast. Like I dropped it on November 23rd. The next day, it was on the uh, SoundCloud charts. It was like number nine on New and Hot. And I kid you not, when that happened, I went on my Instagram, like I went to sleep. I went on my Instagram the next day when I woke up, I saw my DMs. I had every like A&R in my DMs and I was like, like people were like, yo, Atlantic wants to meet with you. Interscope wants to meet with you. 300 wants to meet with you. All these people wanted to meet with me. And I was like, holy shit, this is real. Like I had a manager, I, had my, I, I brought him to my house. And like, I, cause my dad still like, he was like, uh, he, didn't really, he didn't really believe it. So then I brought, like I had a manager, I brought him to my house. I was like, you gotta speak to my dad. Like he needs to know what's going on. And then my dad was like, he was sold. He's like, holy shit, this is really happening. And like, yeah, I just like, I met with everybody. And like, it, it, was just, it, was, it was a life changing experience. Like I met some of like the craziest people like, and I've been in like some of the craziest places where like I used to like dream of going. Like, Cause I used to watch like all my favorite artists, like people I look up to be there. I make music, like I take dark moments of my life and like bring light into it. All my music is upbeat, but if you hear my, if you hear the lyrics, there's, there's like real shit going on. Like I talk about like being heartbroken. I talk about like being homeless, but I'm also saying like everything gets better at the same time. And I'm like making you feel good about it. So you just vibing out with it. I just like to show people that like where you're at right now is temporary. If you, if you, if you believe in yourself, you're, you're going to get to the top.